is your Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, February the 19th, 2019. Today is the feast day, celebrated mostly in Naples in Italy, of St. Quod Vult Deus, whose name means what God wills. The Roman Martyrology tells us that he was the bishop in Carthage in North Africa. Quote, the Arian king Genesaric placed him together with his clergy into boats which were broken and without oars or sails, but they unexpectedly reached Naples, end quote. He was a potent evangelist and theologian who had regular correspondence, even as a young man, with St. Augustine of Hippo, who dedicated actually a few books to, quote, Vult Deus. He died around 450 in Naples and remains one of the many saints particular to that odd city. Today is the birthday in 1473 of Nicholas Copernicus, the great Polish astronomer and mathematician. He was absurdly smart. He spoke at least five languages. He functioned as a professional academic, an astronomer, a mathematician, secretary to the bishop, and a medical doctor. His most famous accomplishment, though, is De Revolutionibus Orbium Celestium, on the revolutions of celestial spheres. The book was a mathematical proof that the planets, and indeed many things that we now call asteroids or planetoids were among that list, revolve around the sun and not around the earth. It's a theory called aliocentrism. This was then the original Copernican revolution, a new way of thinking, specifically a new way of looking at the mathematics of astronomy. We have to note that Copernicus wasn't the first one to propose a system like this. Greeks back in the 400s and 300s BC, as well as Islamic writers in the 12th and 13th centuries, had proposed similar systems. What Copernicus brought to the table was his math, as well as any number of instruments that he created to make these measurements, many of which are still on display today in Krakow at the Agalonian University. We have to say, too, that there wasn't some gigantic backlash from the Catholic Church. In reality, a handful of individual people had significant problems with what he said. Some of them had a problem with the math. Some of them had a problem with the theology. But it really was just a handful of theologians. Interestingly, it was the nascent Protestant thinkers, John Calvin, Philip Melanchthon, and Martin Luther himself, who were most vigorously opposed. It wasn't until Galileo Galilei ran afoul of Pope Paul V that Copernicus's work got caught up with the Counter-Reformation. His book spent about a century on the list of banned books, but is now recognized, along with some other thinkers of that era, as truly a revolutionary work, again, not of theology, but of math. Finally today, three years ago exactly, the world lost two of its most interesting authors, Italian novelist, and philosopher Umberto Eco, born 1932, and U.S. novelist Harper Lee, born 1926. Eco wrote The Name of the Rose, set in a medieval monastery and in the form of a classic whodunit. Eco's work paints a unique and a realistic picture of monastic life in the so-called Dark Ages, complete with Dominicans and Franciscans and Benedictines and Inquisitions and an unexpected depth of theology and philosophy. Harper Lee, on the other hand, wrote To Kill a Markingbird. It too tells a mystery story with a trial and one man fighting for the truth amidst people who prefer comfortable lies. Mockingbird is set in Alabama in the 30s and revolves around the alleged rape of a young white girl by a young black man. Tom Robinson is accused and the judge appoints Atticus Finch to be his defense attorney. Finch fights for his client heroically in spite of a desire of basically everyone just to let the man hang and bring the matter to an end. The entire novel is a consideration and a commentary on appearance, race, courage, justice, and truth. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.